Do you know what a casting director actually does? Do you want to know how you get hired? Stay tuned for this episode of Casting Actors Cast. Welcome to Casting Actors Cast. It's the podcast for actors in the business of show with casting director Jeffrey Dreisbeck. Visit us at castingactorscast.com for more information. Please remember to subscribe and like Casting Actors Cast. Here is your host, Jeffrey Dreisbeck. Episode of Casting Actors Cast. I'm Jeffrey Dreisbach. This is the podcast and simulcast on YouTube for actors in the business of show. I'm a casting director with McCorkle Casting in New York, and I'm really excited that you're here today. I think we've got a really cool subject to talk about. Now, the name of the podcast is called Synchronicity, and if you're not sure quite what that is, I'm going to lay it all out for you in a step-by-step, explaining what it is and explaining exactly how it can benefit you in this episode of Casting Actors Cast. But this is that moment of the podcast where I want to spend just a moment and invite you to go to castingactorscast.com, all one word, Casting Actors Cast. And there you're going to find the website, which is full of some freebies, some downloadable stuff. And I invite you also to fill out the talent form on Casting Actors Cast. If you do that, you're given access to a free downloadable 100-page book on voiceover work. It's called Conversation Pieces Out of the Studio, the voiceover workshop for professional actors. It's just my way of saying thank you for tuning in to Casting Actors Cast. I really appreciate the acknowledgments I've been receiving and hearing from people all over the world. Uh, I just learned that we have like six people in Indonesia that are listening to this podcast. Also, one more reminder that I am here on YouTube, and I'm giving this a shot. I've got some new equipment, and I'm trying to get this together so that it looks halfway decent for you to kind of watch me do the podcast, because sometimes I think having kind of a visual as I'm talking with you about these uh, matters is perhaps even more helpful sometimes than when you're just listening. Either way, I'm excited that you're here, and let's just jump in right into the subject, shall we? Good. So synchronicity is really when a coincidence happens with two or more circumstances simultaneously. Coincidences happen with two or more circumstances simultaneously. So let me give you an example. As a casting director, I I think I mentioned this in a previous podcast, but what I did was I did an EPA. I do a lot of the EPAs, Equity Principal Auditions at Actors' Equity Association. And I was doing an EPA, and it was for the Pittsburgh Public Theater. And the EPA requires that if you're casting in New York, then you have to hold these audition sessions, which I was happy to do. I happen to like EPAs a lot. And I also knew that we were kind of hoping that there would be some interesting new talent that would come to the EPA. Unlike, frankly, a lot of other casting directors, they don't necessarily kind of feel the same value of an EPA that I might, only because I'm always interested in new talent. I'm always interested in finding out who are the new up-and-comers, who might be new to the city that I'm not familiar with, that kind of thing. But anyway, that particular season, Pittsburgh Public Theater was doing a production of uh, Peter Schaffer's Equus. And we did not have the Alan Strand character. And Alan was a young guy, and he sort of is the lead. He and the psychiatrist, if you don't know Equus, it's a fantastic play. I, I recommend it highly. And we really didn't have anybody. But we had the EPA. I held on to all those pictures and resumes from that EPA, as I often do. And then we brought in a bunch of actors to audition for the director. And it turns out that the director wasn't that thrilled with who we had brought in. He had very specific requirements. And I'm going to be talking about this a little bit more in depth in just a moment. And so we were, as casting directors, we were kind of at a loss until I said, you know what? I remember this guy's audition at the EPA, and I'd like to bring him in. So we brought him in. We put him on tape. 
we recorded his audition. We sent that to the Pittsburgh Public Theater, and boom, the guy booked the job. It was very, very exciting. Now, what are the what are the chances that I would be at that particular EPA at that particular time seeing this new actor coming into town? And to take it one step further, we were so thrilled at the work that this actor had done for the audition that we also called an agent and said, you know, there's this new kid in town and we think that you should uh, kind of take a look at him because he's really kind of special. Well, it turns out that that agent did bring him in signed him, and his first television audition, he booked the job <laughs> with a brand new agent. Again, how does that happen? What are the circumstances? Well, that's what I call synchronicity. The stars seemed to align for that actor to create an atmosphere and an energy that was, by all counts, just circumstantial but always led to the next right thing and the next step. So that's what this today's subject is all about. I think it's important that you as an actor invest in what the casting director's perspective is so that you can get a better idea of how you get hired from a casting director. So we're going to go through the steps of what a casting director does in order to facilitate an actor getting hired step by step. So I'm going to go through the steps now and I'm going to talk to you about each of those steps. I won't go into too much depth in some of these areas because I think sometimes they're a little bit obvious, but more importantly is keep the definition of synchronicity in your mind as we see how these stars all align and create opportunities for the actors. Okay? All right. So first step, number one, getting hired. So casting directors are hired guns, just like any other of the creatives on a given production, whether it be film, television, or theater. So happily, I feel pretty confident in saying that we've had a very, very strong reputation for doing good work in casting in those areas for 30 plus years. So many times our reputation alone is enough to warrant getting a look at by some of these producers and directors and artistic directors. So that's kind of exciting. But we'll get a call from somebody who might not be as familiar with our work and we'll take a meeting. And we interview for the job just like any other opportunity, any other job out there. They want to see what our ideas are for the casting job. They want to get an idea of the work that we've done in the past. They want to see if we can work and play well with others. <laughs> Where have you heard that before? All of those same elements go into getting hired. Now, once we get hired, yay, it's very, very exciting. We're excited to join that particular project. Oh, by the way, uh, in case you didn't know, casting directors have agents. We have an agent that sends us film scripts and television projects. Most of the regional theater we do on our own. That's just because we've been doing it for a very, very long time, and people continually hire us over that period of time. But for film and television projects, we'll get our agent to say, would you read this script and see if it's of interest to you? That may sound a little bit snooty, maybe, but it's not. There are just some projects that we're not as comfortable in taking on. It might not be in our wheelhouse, just in terms of what they're seeking versus what we are comfortable and familiar with as far as casting is concerned. So that's something that you might want to keep in mind. But once we get hired, um, we negotiate the contract with the particular theater or the film or the television project. If it's a pilot, for example, there are certain terms that get negotiated. And once that happens, step number two is that we have meetings with the director and or the producer. Now, these meetings can be rather extensive. Now, sometimes they're over Skype. Sometimes they're face to face. Sometimes they're involving several of us in the office at any given time. But that's the meat and potatoes of what the director or the producer is looking for. What kind of actor are they looking for? It's also here that some names get bantied about, especially if they are looking for a name or a celebrity or somebody who has had enough experience to warrant being put into a leading role. Then those kind of discussions happen 
we affectionately call those wish lists because some of the more artier films that don't have these huge budgets will uh, very much think that celebrity actors and, and well-known talent are, is chomping at the bit to do their script. And that's unfortunately not really the case. So sometimes there's a reality check. Sometimes some of these smaller film and television projects will want us to find a name or a star first, and that will help them with their financing of that picture. And that's not a comfortable place for us to be in either. You can imagine. It's sort of working on spec. In other words, you'll only get hired if we find a really well-known person who's going to ha help sell tickets or eyeballs on the television. So we're not really as crazy about that, although I will, I will say we, it's not that we don't do that, but we have to believe really outside of the normal parameters of that particular project for us to consider doing it. So then after those discussions and those meetings, we put what is called out a breakdown. And in the New York, we use what's called breakdown services. Now, there are other services in Los Angeles and Chicago and Atlanta. Uh, we happen to use breakdown services. And that is a description of the project. If it's a film, the budget of the project. If it's a Lort Theater, an Actors' Equity Lort Theater, how much the actor is getting paid, a brief description of the role, and the dates where the shoot and or the project is taking place. That is sent out to every agent and every manager that subscribes to Breakdown Services. So once those breakdowns are given to each of those agents, those agents then work, especially the, the real diligent <laughs> agents, will work really hard to submit back to us their talent that is appropriate for the role. Now, having said that, you can imagine sometimes the agents don't spend a lot of time and just kind of willy-nilly submit a lot of their clients to the project. That's not as exciting for us, but it nevertheless happens. We also have relationships with different agents. Some agents we respect because of their clients. Some agents we have a kind of a looser, looser relationship with that we might not be as familiar with their work. And that, this also goes for managers. And then there are some of those go-to agents that we go to right out of the gate because we know they're conscientious. We know that they have a really good idea, that they read the scripts, that they really do put forth their talent that they believe is going to be appropriate for us to bring in to audition, which takes us to the next step, which is setting up the auditions. Now, that's where we call out all of these appointments to the actors based on those submissions. Now, a side note, we will also receive a lot of unsolicited submissions from actors who are not being represented. And that's a good thing. That's a normal thing. So even if you don't have an agent, that doesn't mean you're out of the running. That means that you have to, for example, for us, you have to go to our website, McCorkleCasting.com, and there's a place where you can submit your project. And as long as you're specific in your submission, like, for example, if you're going to do a digital video audition, then by all means, make sure that you have the scenes that we're using, the sides that we're using. And that's information also, by the way, that's given out a breakdown. I kind of skipped that part. Sorry. <laughs> So you are able to submit to us directly as well, and we do go through those submissions. So once that happens, we start assembling an audition session for the director and or producer and or artistic director to start watching these auditions, to start making a determination about who should be seen for this project. Now, don't forget that we've had these extensive meetings, right? We've had all these meetings so that we are very, very particular in what we're looking for. For example, a director might be rather insistent that we're looking for a person of color. Well, that's absolutely appropriate. That might be really great and needed for the script. That being the case, that's what we're going to do. They might be um, open to all kinds of ideas and suggestions that they don't necessarily have their heart set on any kind of specific actor for that particular role. Then that gives us a little more license to be creative. You see, it's all about the creative process. So now those auditions are set up. 
We call the agents, managers, and the actors directly to set up those auditions. The actor is either available or they're not interested in the particular project because they've looked at the script and they said, I know I was submitted, but I've read the material and this mater I'm not responding well to the material. That's fine. That leaves another slot open. So actors that do their work by reading the script, by finding out if this is a role that is of interest to them, they're helping us narrow the field and make appointments to those actors who A, are available, B, are interested. So then the big day of the auditions happen. We can see from 30 to 50 actors in a given day. That varies depending upon the director's request. Sometimes if we're doing a feature film, the audition itself might be like for a day player kind of role, then there'll be many, many more actors seen for that. If it's a larger role, then clearly, obviously, it makes sense that there's a little more time allotted to those actors for doing those larger roles. We videotape those auditions. If it's a theater audition, the uh, artistic director is there. Um, maybe even the director is there, and they watch the auditions. The auditions may take place over a one to five day period of time, depending upon what we're seeking and our specific requirements for that particular role. Whew, I'm going fast, right? I've had more coffee than God ever intended, so I'm going to keep on going. But we confirm those appointments. The auditions happen. The next step is the director, producer, artistic director, then decide on who they're going to bring back. It's the callback. Now, the interesting thing about callbacks is that it's our responsibility to contact that agent, that manager, or that actor directly and tell them, congratulations, we'd like to see you again for a callback. But we are also responsible for giving the actor appropriate notes that the director might want to see for the callback audition. Make sense? Sometimes it's, no, just come on back. We want to see and do exactly what you did at the audition, and there are no notes or no adjustments. Many, many times, the casting director is responsible for communicating the adjustment to that agent manager or to the actor directly. Now, you can imagine sometimes what happens is we tell an agent a note that we want to see at the callback. That agent reinterprets that information and then supplies that to the actor. It can be a little bit of a delicate balance, a little bit like playing post office, because if the agent isn't really clear or the casting director isn't really clear about the adjustment, then there's a good chance that the actor is going to come in prepared with something that's not going to be appropriate to what was requested. And so how do you get over that? Well, you make sure when you come back to the callback, you mentioned that you were given this note from your agent and do you have it correct? Do you have it correctly that this is the note that you want the agent, that the agent gave you that you want to see? That's always a good thing. It's always a fair, fair thing. So now the callbacks happen. Usually the callbacks, of course, are in a shorter period of time. They happen in an afternoon, uh, de again, depending upon the size of the cast that we're looking for. Now, in the case of a movie, sometimes... It's an ongoing audition because maybe in the case of doing Die Hard 3, for example, the film was shooting as we were continuing to cast. John McTiernan was writing during the shooting of Die Hard 3. So suddenly we would get a call at 7 o'clock at night saying we've added another character and they need to be on the set tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. Ah, crazy. But film and television, sometimes it's an ongoing process. It doesn't happen in one concentrated time period, like it does for theater. Now the decision time happens. Who are the favorite candidates that fulfill the vision of the producer or the director or the artistic director? And so those actors are put down on the floor. Literally, their pictures go down on the floor. And then the producer, director, casting director, uh, everybody's sort of standing on the floor and putting all of these players together. Now, the director's fulfilling their vision. They have an idea about what they're looking for. But now, in a callback situation, they're seeing how these two actors might work together. What's the chemistry like? In film and television, also sometimes in theater, it's things like height. You can change hair color. <laughs> but things like height, there are all kinds of considerations that the actor is not privy to 
when those auditions take place. So just know that there are things in your control and things not in your control. Uh, you know what? I realize I'm looking at the uh, clock on the wall, and I'm going to pick this up in our next episode. We're going to call it Synchronicity 2. So please tune in for that. I'm Jeffrey Dreisbach. Thanks for listening to this episode of Casting Actors Cast. And please come on back to listen to the wrap-up of Synchronicity. You're going to want to hear this. Thanks a lot. Casting Actors Cast is made possible with your support just by listening. Please like, share, and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Caitlin Clark. 